Part 1. Why you flinch at loud noises or fear the dark. You're sitting at home, maybe watching a show, scrolling through your phone, whatever. Then suddenly, bang, something falls. You jump. Your heart skips a beat. You know it's probably nothing serious. And yet, your body acts like you're in real danger. Why does that happen? Well, your reaction is older than your apartment. It's older than cities. It's ancient. That sudden flinch? That's your nervous system doing exactly what it was designed to do, thousands of years ago. Back then, a loud sound wasn't just annoying. It could be a snapping branch right before a predator strikes, or a sudden yell from someone spotting danger. If you froze or hesitated, even for a second, you might not survive. So your ancestors evolved to react instantly. No thinking, just move. And the people whose brains didn't do that? Let's just say their bloodlines didn't make it very far. Same thing with the dark. Ever felt weird being alone in a dark room? Or walking through a shadowy hallway, even though you know it's safe? That feeling, like something's watching you or just out of sight, isn't irrational. It's pre-programmed. Because in prehistoric times, darkness meant uncertainty. And uncertainty meant danger. You couldn't see the snake, the rival tribesman, the sharp cliff edge. Staying alert in the dark was survival. Fear literally kept your ancestors alive. The problem is, we don't live in that world anymore. You're probably not going to be eaten by a lion in your living room. But your brain doesn't know that. It's still wired for the old rules, like a security system that's never been updated, constantly on edge even when there's no real threat. So you jump at a loud noise. You feel uneasy in the dark. It's not because you're too sensitive or paranoid. It's because your brain is doing what it was built to do. You inherited a survival toolkit, whether you need it or not. And that's what makes it so fascinating and sometimes frustrating. Our world evolved fast. Our brains, not so much. But understanding these ancient fears doesn't make you weak. It makes you human. Part 2. Why rejection feels like a threat to your life. Have you ever felt crushed after being left out of something? Maybe you weren't invited to a party. Maybe someone ignored your message. Or maybe you shared an idea at work and the room went silent. Logically, you know it's not life or death, but it feels like it. That sting of rejection, that sinking in your gut, that voice in your head whispering, you don't belong. It's not just in your head, it's in your biology. You see, thousands of years ago, being left out wasn't just awkward, it was dangerous. Back then, you didn't survive alone. You needed your tribe. You needed others to hunt with, sleep near, watch your back. So the brain developed a warning system. One that screams at you when your social ties are in danger. One that treats rejection the same way it treats physical pain. And I mean that literally. Studies show that social rejection activates the exact same regions of the brain as a physical injury. That ache in your chest? Your brain reads it like a burn or a punch. Because in our ancestors' world, social pain was a threat to survival. And the worst part? Your brain still thinks you're living in that world. It doesn't care that you have food in the fridge and a lock on your door. It still responds to rejection, like you're being exiled from the only community that can keep you alive. So every ignored text, every cold shoulder, every moment of being left out, it all hits harder than it should. This is why people stay in toxic relationships, why teenagers spiral after a breakup, why we obsess over likes and followers. Because being left behind still feels like dying alone in the forest. But here's the thing. The fear itself isn't your enemy. It's a relic, a warning system that once kept your ancestors alive. Now, it just gets triggered in a world it wasn't designed for. So next time rejection stings a little too much, remind yourself, this isn't weakness. This is ancient software running on modern hardware. And the fact that you're aware of it, that's power. Part 3. Why uncertainty feels so uncomfortable and why you avoid it at all costs. Imagine this. You send a risky text, and now you're just staring at your phone, heart racing, waiting for a reply. No answer. Minutes pass. Hours. Your brain goes into overdrive. Did I say something wrong? Are they ignoring me? Should I send a follow-up? That tight, uneasy feeling? That spinning mind loop of worst-case scenarios? That's not just anxiety. It's your ancient fear of uncertainty kicking in. See, for our ancestors, uncertainty wasn't just uncomfortable. It was dangerous. If you heard rustling in the bushes, you had to assume it was a predator. If the weather suddenly changed, you needed to prepare for disaster. If someone in the tribe acted strangely, 
It could mean betrayal or exile. Uncertainty meant you didn't have control, and not having control could cost you your life. So, over time, the human brain became obsessed with prediction. It learned to hate the unknown. It learned to crave certainty, even if it had to make things up to get it. And we still do this today, constantly. We check our phones 100 times for that reply. We overthink every word before sending an email. We Google symptoms at 3 a.m. to try to diagnose ourselves. We'd rather know something bad than not know at all. That's the bias, to prefer a terrible certainty over a peaceful ambiguity. Even things like overplanning, perfectionism, or trying to read between the lines in someone's behavior. They're all modern forms of an old survival instinct. But if we can recognize the pattern, we can interrupt it. We can learn to sit with uncertainty, to stop needing to know everything before it happens. Because in the end, fear hates questions. But growth, it lives there. Part 4. Why we obsess over how we look, even when we don't want to. You tell yourself it doesn't matter. You say, I don't care what people think. And yet, you still check your reflection before a meeting. You still zoom in on every flaw in a photo. You still wonder if people notice that one thing you can't unsee. Why? Because thousands of years ago, how you looked wasn't about vanity. It was about survival. And modern culture, flawless skin, perfect teeth, six-pack abs, you're bombarded with images of ideal every single day. Your brain takes those images and updates the tribal rules in real time. This is what I need to look like to be safe. No wonder you obsess. No wonder it's exhausting. But here's the part we forget. Your worth was never supposed to come from your appearance. That was just a signal, a shortcut. What really mattered, even back then, was what you contributed to the tribe. How you helped. How you protected. How you connected. And that part? That's still true today. You can't completely shut off the ancient need to look right. But you can stop letting it run your life. You can notice the obsession, pause, and remember. This isn't truth. This is instinct. And you can choose to value the parts of yourself that actually last. Your character. Your actions. Your impact. Because appearances fade. But presence? That sticks. Part 5. Outdated instincts in a modern world. Your brain is ancient. But your world isn't. You walk around with a nervous system built for danger. In a world filled with emails, deadlines, and traffic. It's no wonder things feel off. The part of your brain that once scanned the jungle for predators now freaks out when someone leaves you on red. The instincts that once kept you alive are now making you anxious, insecure, and overwhelmed. Let's be clear. Your brain isn't broken. It's overprepared. It sees threat where there is none. So today, you get flooded with cortisol. Not because a tiger is chasing you, but because you made a mistake at work. This mismatch between old wiring and modern life is the hidden source of so many of our struggles. But here's the good news. You don't have to be ruled by instincts. Awareness is the first step. You're not just a bundle of reactions. You're a human. You can step back, observe, and choose. That's your superpower. And in a world that's constantly triggering your primal fears, that superpower matters more than ever. So the next time you feel overwhelmed, judged, or stuck, don't blame yourself. Just remember, you're running modern software on ancient hardware, and that's not a flaw, it's a challenge, one you're fully capable of rising to. If you found this interesting, consider subscribing for more strange truths about the mind and human behavior. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.